Ray Glasser Library. In full living color. Hi there, I'm Ray Glasser, and this is our famous tour in color of my Betamax library. What I'll show you is how I organize and collect my tapes, how I categorize them, and you'll also see tape by tape what movies and TV shows I have in my Betamax collection as of today, October 30th, 1978. First of all, some people think these are used to hold 30 pounds of tomatoes. Well, they're wrong. These are used to hold 24 Betamax tapes <laughs> because each box up here hold exactly 24 Betamax tapes, as you see. Okay, this is the way that I organize the collection. Each tape has got a Dymo label on it with different color codes. TV shows such as this or this one over here are on a blue Dymo label tape. If I tape the show myself and I know, know when it was taped, I put the date down here on a smaller label in green. Movies are in red, and again, if I taped it here myself or a friend taped it, the date is in green. When I get a dub from somebody else and I don't know when it was taped, such as King Kong here from 1933, the label is centered on the Betamax label. So we have blue for TV shows, red for movies, and over here, any special tapes like Ray and Gary on camera and my Star Trek bloopers are on a green label. This goes for the whole collection. The only other difference is if I have a tape that's on the X2 speed, I put a small two up here in the upper left-hand corner and this way I can look at the tape from a distance and see that it is in fact on the X2 speed and won't play back on an X1 machine. And this is really it. So we're going to fade to black now in a couple seconds and then we'll come back up on a tape-by-tape -tape tour of the Ray Glasser Library. Okay, we're now in the corner, way back to June of 1976 when this whole adventure began. The first 17 tapes as of today are miscellany. This is graphics, slides, new sets, new shows, uh, hard to get things that I just can't put on other tapes, whether uh, if it's because they're too long or whatever. So we have a whole collection of miscellany tapes. This is my Mission Impossible series. Five tapes right now, and the pilot is number 20, the first in the series. Each one has a different cast. The Tomorrow Show with uh, Star Trek, a manic show from 1968 or so. And now we go up to some movies. This Island Earth, a classic sci-fi movie. Original Phil Silver show, The Honeymooners. And some of the best quality tapes in my collection. The entirety of the NBC first 50 years from November of 1976. And now we go to the Star Trek collection. 12 Star Treks, most of which are uncut off TV from a station in Mississippi. On the second level, starting with tape 49, we're now in January of 1977. These are more or less in chron chronological order as I've taped them. Genesis 2, another Gene Roddenberry production. Here's Westworld off TV and Future World Uncut off cable TV. Search the pilot for the probe 
and Search TV series. DI, Black and White with Jack Webb. Time Tunnel, very hard to get movie or TV show. The original Airport, original Kung Fu. English Import, Journey to the Far Side of the Sun. And my favorite, a CinemaScope copy of Forbidden Planet Uncut. Here we have some local news from Cleveland, taped in 1977. City Camera News, followed by Walter Cronkite and the CBS News. Uncut Voice of Bottom of the Sea, pilot movie, plus a couple TV shows, including the pilot. Bug, uncut off cable TV. Very hard to get TV show called Star Lost from Canada. Wild Wild West pilot there, number 96. The first Planet of the Apes movie. And here we have The Night Stalker and The Night Strangler, two made-for-TV movies. King Kong from 1933. Psycho, a classic Hitchcock. And, of course, when TV w was young from CBS from April of 1977. There's The Invaders, the first being the pilot episode Beachhead, followed by the second and third shows. Ray and Gary on camera from May of 77. Number 100, the first milestone. A couple classic TV shows there. Jack Benny, that's Hollywood. Superman. Most of this case is Superman and the Twilight Zone. Some of these are film chains. Some of them are off TV. There's our first 750 from Sears from St. Louis, Missouri for only $21. And that's seven TV shows on the X2 speed on that one tape. A whole bunch of Twilight Zones here. And from HBO, The Omen. Next case is James Bond. All of them, four of which are uncut. There's the first one, Dr. No, off TV. Followed by From Russia With Love, also off TV. Goldfinger Uncut, film chain copy. Thunderball, off TV. You Only Live Twice, off TV. And right now, on Her Majesty's Secret Services, off TV, we hope to have an uncut cut copy coming in someday. Diamonds Are Forever, off TV. Uncut copy on the way. Next three are uncut. Live and Let Die, Man with the Golden Gun, and, of course, The Spy Who Loved Me. The Time Machine, Earth vs. Flying Saucers, all taken off TV. A hot one, Star Wars, not a bad print. We hope to get better someday. Classic comedy, Blazing Saddles, uncut off cable TV, as well as The Exorcist, also off cable. Drive-In, a classic movie, also off cable. Casablanca with Bogey, and an uncut copy of The Poseidon Adventure with CinemaScope bars. War of the Worlds, an X1 to X1 Betamax dub, as well as The Incredible Shrinking Man. It's classic TV, Armis Brooks and the Millionaire from Chicago. The Tonight Show, 16th anniversary. Man with the X-ray eyes, Jim Novotny's favorite film, and some more TV shows there. Almost the whole case of the Outer Limits. There's a pilot, of the Galaxy being, as well as some other classic Outer Limits shows. UFO, very hard show to get. 181 is the pilot. Here's some more old TV shows. Man from Uncle, hard to get show. The Fugitive series. The first, two middle episodes, and the two-part ending, plus my cube sampler. And now we go down to the bottom and the newest stuff. My favorite movie, Pan and Scan off CBS, Forbidden Planet. Missiles of October, an ABC made-for-TV movie from 1974. The Prisoner series, the first, two middle episodes, and the last. To Serve with Love off TV, Burns and Allen. Hawaii Five-0, where Chin gets killed. A made-for-TV Irwin Al Allen movie, City Beneath the Sea. CBS on the air, nine hours condensed down to four and a half. Mary Tyler Moore, first and last show. And, of course, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the best print in the world. The original Frankenstein from 1931. The new King Kong from 1976, off home box office uncut. The Parent Trap, a classic 1961 Disney movie. What's missing? <laughs> We're missing the first hour of Oh God, okay. It's somewhere around here, folks. Pit in the Pendulum and the Man. Thank you very much. Okay. The library's now complete. Okay. All righty. Now we go back to 1957 for Ozzy and Harriet. David and Ricky were still kids. This is the SL8200 Betamax demo tape made by Sony. TV copy of The Birds. Some of these, by the way, are now on X2, such as The Birds, The Clone Master taped off NBC in September of 78. Uh, Animal House, we want to talk about that. There's our first Sony L750 with Battlestar Galactica, the first three-hour movie on it, as well as the show of the Avengers, Andromeda Strain, and an uncut copy of Failsafe. And finally, the last couple items here, Pink Flamingos, the worst, grossest, and sleaziest movie ever made, followed by Houlihan and Big Chuck, which is a local uh, Cleveland bit. Here are my uh, Betamaxes, by the way. 
That's my SLO320 right there, the industrial machine, which is almost portable, which is making this tape right now. And next to that is my Zenith X1, X2, which will someday be phased out and converted to an X2 only machine. And let's see, down there is my original SL7200, the first Betamax made for home use with a bad head. <laughs> and over there is a borrowed Zenith X2, which you can barely see. Okay, I guess that just about does the whole thing. Ray Glasser in living color in October of 1978 with my library. We finally got it done. So this is what I look like. These are my tapes. Thanks for putting up with us. And from the snow belt of the, of the nation, Cleveland, Ohio, so long. Take care. First and last time ever, the entire video collectors of Ohio have gotten together at the apartment of Ray Glasser in Cleveland to have a steak party with our honor, honored guest from Ypsilanti, or is it Ypsilanti? It's Ypsilanti. Ypsilanti, Michigan, Mr. Art Volo. We have her shirt. This is Ray Glasser speaking on May 22nd, for you, 1978. And as I said, for the first and probably last time ever, we have the entire VCO together with our good friend Art Volo from Ypsilanti, Michigan, another videotape freak. Say something. Okay. Hey, listen, I want to tell you, uh, it's, it's not cool looking the monitor, so I won't look in it, right? Am I looking right in the lens? Is that the eye that never winks, blinks? Is this going to Mazzini? It will be. Hey, Joe. Don't you wish you were here? We're just having a savage time. No, no, no beer, no nothing. The pizza places are all Cleveland closes at nine o'clock. What can I? Ten o'clock. But uh, no, this is a day that, honest to God, I shall never forget. Why am I so vain? I always think that my hair is in my face. Anyway, I shall never. You like the WLS? Do you see the WLS? Is my hair in my face? Anyway. This has been incredible, absolutely incredible day, and we had a really good meal earlier tonight. What is it? It's 11:25 uh, or so at night, <laughs> much too late, and um, having a, just just a, a killer time. We have been dubbing. Get a shot. Get a shot of the equipment. We got to show to folks. Okay. We have got nine machines over here right now. Nine. Nine. Okay. Nine machines. Now wait, as, we, as he goes down, why don't you, are you sure that's enough light? Okay. That's. There you okay, go. there's a machine. There's one. There's two. Keep going. There's There's another one. Wait. Yeah. Off the, off the ceiling. It's got to be better. Uh, yeah, there yeah. There's mine. That's my little that's my little 320 back there. That's raised 320 over there. That's uh, another 7200 back there. Then we got what's that? That's a Toshiba. Is that the Toshiba? Yeah, that's a Toshiba. Yeah. There's another one back there. <laughs> I've lost count already. How about you, gang? And uh, coming around the front, here's another one. Oh, the and th there's a little, yeah, there's another Sony. And then finally, Next there's one. a Zenith right down here. Oh, that's here. a little real to real. Here's the Zenith. Here, get it down here. There right. it is. That's one there's the Zenith. Zenith. Right. I'm sure Mazzini knows what those look like. He, yeah. he had one. Now somebody else has got one. But he's got an 8200 now, see? Oh, stepped Yeah, he stepped up yeah. just a little. Well, you know, same machine. Yeah. It depends on whether or not you want a lot of walnut on it, right? And that. With a little very hot record light, record light, light right? <laughs> yes. That's it's red. See, use your imagination. Use a lot of imagination. <laughs> the color, the color isn't coming oh, through as good as it should. <laughs> That's well. A little faded. Color burst is down. Could you give us a good excuse, as Steve, as to why we don't have color? Yeah, we uh, pulled the muting circuit. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, if you want to pull your muting circuit, don't forget to read my article in the latest issue of TVN. And you that's why. Hi. That's why the color is not showing up. If you're playing this tape. On a color SL8200 or SL7200, it should be in living color. Take a look at my color bar shirt. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Blue, red, magenta, green. Okay, light blue, yellow, fuchsia. This is, yes, thank you. This is I and Q. It's called I and Q, the purple and the white. Now, of course, you're getting all these colors if you have a color machine. If you're not, uh, it's probably because you have something wrong with your machine. Take it into your Sony service center. Thank you very much, Art. <laughs> okay. Nothing like a few comments from comment. Okay. Right. Here we go. We now go at the only time we'll all be together, the rest of the video collectors of Ohio playing cards. You table this whole thing. Oh, I agree oh, to that. Yeah. Here we have Jim Novotny. Hello. Uh, what do I know? Uh, who are we talking to? Anybody. Who am I talking to? Anybody? Zini. Uh, Mazzini, no, I don't want to talk to him. Uh, we've been playing cards. Joe, and you mean that. Yes, I do mean that. <laughs> and right now I'm getting down on cards, so I'll let you talk to Gary, who's always got a lot of things to say here. Uh, I'll, 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 watch the prize. I'll talk as soon as my turn is over, 
Uh, it's my turn now. I'll pass this over to Chris Hitchcock. Uh, Joe, I'm, I'm bored to death. That's why I'm playing cards. I'll, uh, we'll pass it over. Oh, I got hired. I'm now selling drugs in the city of Cleveland, for the city of Cleveland. See, this is a new plan by Mayor Dennis Kucinich. He's uh, 13, and uh, the, the best way for him to raise money is through the selling of drugs. So I really am looking forward to a very exciting uh, next few weeks. Uh, we're going to pass this over to Mr. Maskey. Bye. Who's this going to? Oh, that's a fellow in California, right? The, the Led Zeppelin movie was terrific, really good quality, and I'm sending the tapes off to you that you requested. And all the pizza shops in Cleveland is, have closed, so we're in big trouble. Now we're going to turn it over to Chick Watkins from WG. Oh, you're going to, well, you missed your turn. You were checking the fries. How are the fries doing? Okay, terrific. Yeah, this is, uh, get the camera on the star here. Star's on the microphone. This is uh, Gary Herman again. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, this is close. This is incredible. No, I don't want to take my glasses off. Uh, anyhow, I I own a Betamax 7200. I own 155 or so tapes. Uh, You've talked to him before. You've talked to him before. Mazzini. Wait, a minute. oh, oh, Mr. Mazzini. Oh, what is this? Wow. Uh, I have to check the fries. Uh, anyhow, Mazzini. Uh, let me tell you the. Uh, what was that? Just incredible. I don't know. Um, oh, uh, Al. What it was Al? Succulent. No, not succulent. No, he said, what was this one with this? Uh, Fantasia. Not Fantasia. Don't I don't know what you sent, but you sent one tape with little bits and pieces on it. Oh, Rocky Horror Show. Yeah. Oh, man, hey. That's, to find that. that's too heavy for me, man. Let me tell you. I got to pass this up. Here. Hi there. Very happy to be here tonight. I don't want to take up too much time because I know we all want to get back to dubbing all of our favorite <laughs> movies. Uh, last time I was up till 4.30 uh, uh, taping uh, Close Encounters, so it looks like another uh, long stint tonight. Is that it? Okay, that's it, folks. Let's get back to taping. Uh, I'm the cameraman, and you can't see me until now. And we're here. And I'm the cameraman, and um, I used to be a disc jockey, but now I'm unemployed. And the reason we invited Chick over here was so Chick would hire me because I need a gig. But that's the way it is, and who are we going to now? Let's go on to the more dubbing. Well, I think we're going to go to more dubbing. Gary wants French fries. And um, other than that, um, I have nothing else to say. And uh, I do want to say something. If this is going to Joe Mazzini, right, Art? Art? Joe, Art made a very nasty comment about you and said it to me on the phone without meeting me. And then he reversed that comment. <laughs> Look at these atrocious fries. <laughs> wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, Come over French fries. Come on. 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 Um, other than that, it's a very nice, very, very nice night in Cleveland, and uh, it's about 60 degrees. We had a very nice day, and as you can see, nine machines. It's a very exciting day. We finally got to meet Art Volo, or Volulu, as some, some people call him in the uh, African nations. Art is going on a big trip. He's going to Africa to sell his radio guides to Zulus. And uh, it will be Zulu Radio, W-Z-O-O, -O, South Bend, Africa. So be looking for that. If you do want some more radio guides, call him at area code 313-434-2712. And in Michigan, let, let's show a radio guide. 
Now, this is from WIFE Wife in uh, Philadelphia? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. I'm in radio, as you can see, and I know <laughs> what I'm talking about. But anyway, the rock guide, which is developed by Mr. Volo, and uh, it's got a whole bunch of shit in it. I hope I can swear. I hope your kids aren't watching. As you can see, all, all kinds of good shit stuff. But now Art Valulu is going to do a rap, and I'm going to run the camera again. So we're going to switch. <laughs> this is so professional, isn't it? Aren't you glad you aren't here? All right. Uh, try and make me look halfway decent here. Listen, I just want to say that uh, this has been a night, uh, as long as I live, I'll never forget. I just hope everybody can make it to Michigan one of these days. Uh, I'll probably play this for, like, my friend Stu Goldberg, who works at WXYZ. Hello, Stu. Yes. Oh, did Stu send you the belt buckle? That's where you got the XYZ belt. Anyway, and uh, I am sure that um, this is something that I shall never erase. And I'll play it back for everybody about 20 years from now to haunt them all. And, no, don't do that to me. I'm getting very dizzy. Oh, God. Anyway, we'll see you later. Thanks a lot for putting up with us. Bye. Fade out. <laughs> We're still the Today was the first full day. State Treasurer Melba Till Allen has been in court all day long. Mike? ABC's Monday Night Baseball will return to Channel 32 tonight with the Padres and Dodgers game. Jim? Thunderstorms of good intensity right now are reported near Wetumpka, also 10 miles to the southeast of Selma. They're moving this way at about 10 or 15 miles per hour. Brad? Thank you, Jim. We'll have more news, weather and sports as First Edition News continues. Boston Bruins have even even to the Jim. What happened to all our good just sunshine out there? It went away all day today. <laughs> all you know, gone, yeah. Zap. You hear it coming down? There? Yeah. Yeah. You'll hear more of it because it's a big thunderstorm moving our way. It'll probably move our way at about 15 miles per hour. It's just over in Wetumpka. I'll tell you about it. Okay. okay. Yeah. The sunshine's gone for a while. Probably tomorrow will be clearing up some, and I'll tell you more about it when we come to the Alabama board, but the culprit is this little warm front that extends all the way from the southwestern portion of Nebraska down to the Atlantic coast off South Carolina. Now, here's the satellite picture that shows the activity today. 83 degrees and fair, meanwhile, today out in Dallas-Fort Worth at the International Airport there, 45 degrees in Milden, Idaho, and that's the nation's low this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Meanwhile, down in Texas, it was 97 degrees at uh, the Presidio in Texas. Also, it was 97 degrees at Gila Bend, Arizona this afternoon, and 68 degrees in San Francisco under partly cloudy conditions today. 55 and a fair day, good day, going for Seattle. I don't know where Seattle lost all its rain. I think it's found us right now at the present time here in the Montgomery area. These are the current conditions in Montgomery. In case you'd like to know, currently it is 85 degrees. The high today, 87, per, uh, 87 degrees. The morning low is down to 68. Barometric pressure, 29.97 inches and rising now. The humidity, 94%. Winds are kicking around from the west at about six miles per hour. Precipitation is not measured now, but we are getting precipitation present time. The sun rise at 545 tomorrow morning and will set tomorrow afternoon at 739. 
We have a severe thunderstorm alert for several counties, including Lowndes County, portions of Dallas County, cast for tonight and tomorrow. Tonight, we have thunderstorms. How about that, Jim? You did it. Good, too. Low the night. It should be about 65 degrees, 40% possibility of rain tonight. Tomorrow, it's going to be cloudy and warm. The high is about 92, forecasted for tomorrow. And so, to Teresa, who said to be sure to wave at her, that's the weather. But watch out. We might have a thunderstorm of biggie later on. We'll keep you posted. Brad? Thank you, Jim. We remind you, of course, if you're on the roads, please drive safely. That's First Edition News at 6. Thanks for watching. Join us again at 10. hour. From Alabama's News Center, this is WSFA TV News, the 10 o'clock report. Now with tonight's news, Bob Howell. Good evening. The dust is just beginning to settle around the state capitol tonight after Governor Wallace astounded the majority of political observers in Alabama when he announced that he will not be seeking the U.S. Senate seat to be vacated by Senator John Sparkman. Get your morning for down in uh, Dale County, down south of Ozark. What was the, the story on the tornado there? Well, it was about three miles south of Ozark, and state troopers dispatched a unit to the scene, couldn't find any damage, but apparently there was a tornado in that area. Uh, fortunately, there, along with no reports of damage, there, of course, have been no reports of injuries as a result of that storm, and it has long since apparently dissipated. Earlier today, there was also a tornado down in the southwestern portion of the state, and it was an unusual occurrence in that Normally, weather service officials don't have storms close enough to them to actually cite them. They around the regional map now. Skies are partly cloudy to cloudy. Temperatures in neighboring states were reported one hour ago. Atlanta then read 68. Columbus, Georgia, 71. 69 in Panama City. Right now, it's 70 in Birmingham. 71 in Selma. Auburn, Opelika, 65. Dothan, 65 also. At Montgomery's Danley Field, 69 Fahrenheit is the temperature. 21 degrees Celsius. Cloudy skies. And the wind is now from the southeast at 5 miles per hour. This morning's low was 59 degrees. Today's high was 76. Relative humidity is 81%. The barometer is rising at 30 inches even. The sun will rise tomorrow at 546, setting at 738. And at 7 this morning, Lake Martin was down by one-tenth of a foot from yesterday, and Lake Jordan was down by six-tenths of a foot. The forecast for Montgomery and vicinity, partly cloudy uh, tonight through Thursday and through Friday. A lot of baseball, uh, Southern League action tonight, and the Rebels in Nashville still going at it up in Music City, USA. Right. Uh, still going on. The Rebels uh, continuing their four-night stand in Nashville, and the game uh, started at 7.45 our time. Seventh inning score now. The Rebels trying to win, uh, uh, make it two out of three up there. It's 6-5 after seven innings of play. Elsewhere in the Southern League tonight, Orlando blank Knoxville by a score of 2 nothing, and Savannah beat Chattanooga Five to two, in the major leagues, the New York Yankees and the Cleveland Indians. The Yankees have come from behind in, uh, rather, the Indians have come from behind in ten innings to win that game tonight by a score of five to four. Uh, Toronto's Blue Jays and Baltimore were rained out in Baltimore tonight. Seventh inning score: the Detroit Tigers leading the Milwaukee Brewers by a score of four three, and the Chicago White Sox are out front on the Cal Angels after seven four to one. A WSFA TV editorial. The certainty about Alabama politics is that nothing is certain. That fact was brought home again with Governor Wallace's announced decision in Mobile. It's an opportunity to respond. That's tonight's 10 o'clock report from all of us at TV 12. Thanks for watching. From Alabama's News Center, this has been WSFA TV News, the 10 o'clock report. Our next news tomorrow morning at 725. on News Center 5 at 6.
I'm Chet Curtis. The recent mid-air collision of two light planes near the Lawrence Airport points up the tragic irony of this least frequent but most deadly type of airplane accident. Most of them take place in good weather and near airports which don't have control towers. On my byline report this week, we'll take a look at the Lawrence Airport and efforts to get a tower there. Reporters byline only on News Center 5. 25,268 Massachusetts residents know CPR. Become a Channel 5 heart saver. Enroll in a course. Call the Heart Association 2629610. The Good Day Show, weekday mornings at 9 on 5. This is New Center 5 Eye Opener with Bob Klinkscale and meteorologist Bob Copeland. Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 30th. Here are some of the stories we report for you this day. The NATO summit opens today in Washington. President Carter will address the opening session. A series of 10 or more explosions has rocked Texas City, Texas early today. First reports tell us that at least a dozen are injured. A Cohasset, Massachusetts man killed his wife, shot their three children, seriously wounding them and then turned the gun on himself and killed himself. The lottery number in Massachusetts, 5-6-2-3, 56-23. In sports, the Red Sox have edged the Toronto Blue Jays yesterday afternoon, their seventh win in a row. The Yankees have also won, and uh, the first day back to work for a lot of folks. And uh, a look at the weather, here's Robert. Okay, Robert, we have another summery day in store for us. The fog is a little thinner this morning in most areas. It's going to burn off very quickly, and we're looking for temperatures to zoom on back toward 90 today over most of the mainland area. And it looks like more summer weather much of this week. We'll be back. Okay, Bob. Well, at least 12 people have been injured, several critically burned in a series of explosions which rocked an oil refinery in Texas City, Texas, early this morning. All available ambulances and fire equipment have been rushed to the scene. At least 10 blasts are believed to have shook one of the several oil refineries in the city, setting off an inferno that could be seen in Houston, Texas, 35 miles away. Again, the Quirk's three-year-old daughter, Sarah, is listed in fair condition at South Shore Hospital in Weymouth this morning. Her brother's six-year-old, Philip, and eight-year-old, Patrick, are now in stable condition after surgery there last night. Temperature is 64 in Boston, and we're coming up on 10 minutes after 6. We'll talk about the weather with Bob Copeland after this break. Hmm. It's uh, 11 and a half minutes after 6 o'clock in the morning. And we're for our duet this morning. We've chosen an old lullaby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, gee, we've had a great string of weather here. and uh, Incredible. It's going to continue, I guess. Huh? Yep, it looks that way. We have, yeah. um, of course, some exceptions to that. I mean, down over the Cape, this time of year. Oops, excuse me. I'll let you get it. Yes. This time of year, that southerly Being wind. Being younger uh, than you are, I yes, guess. Yes. That southerly wind coming across the uh, chilly waters of the Atlantic means a lot of fog. And, of course, it does burn off during the day over much of the Cape, but along the south coast, especially in the islands, it tends to blow in and out most of the day. So. Um, the folks down the Cape haven't completely shared the nice weather we've had here. Boston, by the way, is clear in 65 right now. And this is the first morning in the past several weeks we haven't had, that we haven't had some clouds in the Boston area. Out here in Needham, we do have some low clouds and uh, the fog tomorrow. The forecast goes like this. For today, mostly sunny, hazy, warm, humid. High temperatures, 85 to 95. Again, the fog and haze will be flitting in and out much of the day around the Cape. Temperatures there in the 70s. Southwest winds on the order of 8 to 15 miles an hour. Tonight, a few evening thunderstorms. Northern and western New England. The rest of us will enjoy some fair weather. It'll be foggy, of course, late at night along the south coast. Temperatures in the 60s overnight. <coughs> Pardon me, hay fever season. And for Wednesday, sunny, warm, and humid with temperatures in the 80s and low 90s. Now tomorrow, afternoon and evening thunderstorms look as though they're going to be much more general coming across New England. The outlook for Thursday and Friday, by the way, is continued uh, generally fair and warm. Okay, Robert. Thank you, Robert. I want to clarify the fact that Robert is not older than I am. He's younger than I am, but he does have hay fever and I don't. We'll get that squared away. On Beacon Hill, the Senate is scheduled to begin what promises to be a long and bitter debate on the state budget. Two attorneys from the Boston area, allegedly, has come under the scrutiny of federal authorities tax shelter operation has been the focus of a series of reports by the News 5 investigative unit. Osman Garfinkel operations. 
That may change when the Securities and Exchange Commission begins making public its findings. I'm John Camp of the New Center 5 Investigative Unit. 64 degrees is our temperature reading, coming down in uh, 19 and a half minutes after 6 o'clock in the morning. A little baseball, a little boxing coming up after this. <laughs> The Red Sox will try to make it eight wins in a row tonight when they take on Toronto at Fenway Park. Dennis Eckersley has the starting honors with Game 7. Came last night over Toronto 5-4. One big blast started the Sox scoring. Chicago 4-2. Cincinnati slid past Atlanta 7-5. San Francisco dumped Houston 8-1. I guess the Giants are for real. People have been injured. That's our sports report. And uh, I had to insert this page. That's why I'm starting there, because it's a little different than the other pages. Anne has arrived. We have our first summary of the news, which will uh, be interpreted by her for our deaf viewers. At least 12 people have been injured, several of those critically burned in a series of explosions which rocked an oil refinery in Texas City, Texas, early this morning. All available ambulances and fire equipment were rushed to the scene. President Carter will open the two-day NATO summit conference in Washington today. The president is expected to express concern over Soviet-Cuban activities in Africa. To uh, answer a promise, I ran into a group of uh, young people from Coolidge Junior High School in Natick the other day watching our son pitch for the uh, Framingham North Junior freshman team. So a group of kids came over and they were very nice. So I said, uh, I said, can we say hello? Can you say hello to us? You always get that request, don't you? Oh, yeah. So good morning to the kids at the Coolidge Junior High School in Natick this morning. <laughs> Here's Bob Cobo on the weather. Well, I certainly hope they're all up. I mean, after all, it is a school day, it's right? It's back to school today, right. Okay, well, we haven't... Uh... In editorials, Channel 5 has urged passage of a bill that would create a statewide 24-hour hotline for reporting child abuse cases. Here with another view is State Senator Sharon Pollard of Methuen. In a recent editorial, Channel 5 urged creation of a statewide hotline for reporting child abuse cases. What did David do? Did he wave his hand at you? We have to go quickly. Uh, We're glad that you joined us, and we hope that you will join us again tomorrow. That's our news for Tuesday, May 30th. Local updates at 725 and 825 in Good Morning America. For Ann and Bob and all the crew, I'm Bob Clinkscale. Do have a good day today, and do join us again tomorrow. Bye -bye. This has been News Center 5 Eye Opener with Bob Klinkscale and meteorologist Bob Copeland. A presentation of WCBB TV News and Public Affairs. The Better Business Bureau. The Good Day Show, weekday mornings at 9 on.